Hello, I'm Jane and I was recently shortlisted for the Tony Lovian Prize for a proposal for an unpublished biography by the Biographers Club. If you would like to know more about the Biographers Club and what they do, I've put a link to their website below. In normal times, I would have been invited to the Biographers Club's Christmas party in London. But this year, of course, it was a Zoom meeting and instead of making small talk about books over delicious cocktails, all the shortlisted authors gave a short talk about their project. So, as an introduction to Amabel Williams Ellis, I thought I would record the talk I gave and share it so that more people can hear a little bit more about who Amabel was. My proposal is for a book about Amabel Williams Ellis and how she came to, came to write the book The Art of Being a Woman in 1951, which I like to describe as a feminist manifesto for the frustrated housewife masquerading as a domestic advice manual. I first became aware of Amabel's existence in the foothills of the Snowdonia Mountains. There is what looks like a ruined medieval tower, but a plaque reads that it was built as a wedding present to Clough Williams Ellis and his bride Amabel Strachey in 1915 by his brother officers of the Welsh Guards. This was when I first wondered who Amabel was and what she thought of her wedding present. Amabel's life story takes us from a sighting of Queen Victoria to listening to David Bowie on the radio. She worked as a Red Cross nurse in World War I, wrote over 70 books, travelled to Soviet Russia, campaigned against the appeasement of fascism, was the subject of MI5 surveillance and on a Nazi blacklist of people to be rounded up in the event of a successful invasion. She married Clough Williams Ellis because he was the only one of her suitors who allowed her to be herself and they were married for 70 years and had three children. While she has largely been forgotten now, I often find her in the margins of more famous lives. There she was in the index of Virginia Woolf's diaries, and when I turned to the page, it just tantalisingly said, Amabel rang up. I've even found a connection with the disappearance of Agatha Christie in 1926. My family like to joke that there is no subject I can't link Amabel to in some way, and my lovely friend Imogen even had a mug made for me because I had talked about her so much. What resonates with me are the searching questions. <laughs> Amabel asked of the world she lived in. She critiqued herself as a slow learner because recognising that women's experiences were left out of the history books, it often it only dawned on her much later in life that Westerners were in the minority and the majority of humanity were being left out of the record. I put the emphasis on the word learner for her. She was always willing to listen and engage, meaning that she always feels modern and that's what makes her such a fascinating mirror to the 20th century. Just like us, she doesn't know all the answers, but she is grappling to try and figure out important questions about how we might live better. I've chosen to focus mainly on the years up to 1951 and the publication of The Art of Being a Woman because I think this theme meant a lot to her and was what she came back to at the end of her life. In the closing lines of her memoirs, she is looking at a granddaughter with a boyfriend and fretting that she won't finish her PhD if she falls in love and she is holding a great granddaughter on her knee and thinking about what her life will be like. To close, I would like to share this quote. The art of being a woman is to remember that, in order to give life, we must take care to be alive ourselves. At the end of 2020, with its serious lack of childcare, I find this reminder still resonates.